I have the rand trading around 696 this morning. And of course, it went to 697 yesterday, more, yesterday afternoon after touching that 676 back on Friday. So some weakness coming in. Of course, we had China raising interest rates yesterday, and that really seeing some emerging markets and commodity currencies weakening. Morning, Stephen. Yes, you're, you're absolutely like, right. I mean, there, there are a number of factors that, that affected the rand's weakness yesterday. Um, as you mentioned, China China increased rates, and that obviously had a knock-on effect on, on almost all emerging markets as global growth concerns then came back to the fore as um, China's GDP growth is expected to then slow down. Um, in addition to that, I think there's still continued reaction to the Brazilian authorities' uh, decision to increase the their uh, in tax on, on foreign inflows. Um, and then on top of all of that, we actually had a bit of strength coming back into the dollar after better than expected housing starts. So it is a combination of factors, really, Stephen, that saw the RAD weaken so dramatically yesterday. Because we also had the Reserve Bank Governor Jill Marcus uh, speaking yesterday and saying that economic growth needs more than just optimal exchange rates. She was also talking about accommodative monetary policy. Do you think uh, she's starting to, to lay the ground for an interest rate cut next month? It certainly seemed that way, Stephen. I mean, I, I think looking at the speech, she really tried to steer an even course and, and not uh, give a clear bias either way. It's expected to remain accommodative for some time, and I think uh, certainly some market participants would have taken that to imply that there's an increased probability of, of a rate cut uh, somewhere in the next six months. Um, but I do think that she was really trying to do, you know, more steer a, an even ground rather than, than give away the, the bank's bias at this point. Of course, we also had the finance minister, Praveen Gordon, saying yesterday and really warning against the competitive devaluations you're seeing coming through from a number of emerging markets, and I presume he's including Brazil in those. So, I mean, it looks unlikely at this stage going into the, the mini budget at the end of this month that South Africa is going to take a similar stand to countries like Thailand and like Brazil, doesn't it? No, absolutely, Stephen. I mean, um, the minister's comments yesterday just followed on a number of earlier comments by himself, as well as the, the DG, who, uh, who've, who've all emphasized the fact that a, a global currency war and a global trade war that would ensue as a result would be undesirable for, for all countries. But particularly for a country like South Africa, which is a small open market economy, we don't have a huge amount of reserves. So if countries do decide to react unilaterally uh, as Brazil, as Brazil has done, uh, South Africa certainly couldn't hope to, to jump into a currency war and, and try to defend a competitive level of the exchange rate for the RAND. We simply don't have the resources. Well, just looking forward, you mentioned uh, that Chinese interest rate increase in the light of, of growth in China. Of course, we're getting growth numbers out tomorrow. And, and the, the expectation is for pretty strong growth still to be coming out of China, isn't it? Yeah, absolutely, Stephen. I mean, they're expecting growth to have moderated to 9.5% to in the third quarter from 10.3% in, in the previous quarter. So, I mean, it really is it's still quite a phenomenal growth rate. Um, but I, I think the concern is that, that if Chinese authorities continue to, to tighten the screws on, on credit um, and, and, and banking, bank lending, then uh, we could see a further decline in, in Chinese GDP growth in the coming quarters. Well, just ahead of that, we have data coming out of the UK today. We have the BOE minutes being released. Uh, that's from the most recent decision. Also, UK government finances. Uh, what's the market going to be looking for in any of that data? Yeah, two very key releases there, Stephen. Well, firstly, the the um, budget the the. UK budget deficit is, is of course of major concern and the Chancellor of the Exchequer is expected to make public his proposals for slashing the deficit by slashing public spending so definitely that's going to be one of the one of the highlights and things that people will be looking out for today. Uh, in addition as you mentioned there the BOE minutes and the the question now is whether the BOE is inclined to follow the um, what appears to be the lead of the Fed and the Bank of Japan in engaging in additional quantitative easing uh, and the minutes are expected to provide some insight into how many members of the committee are in favor of quantitative easing.